I may not like doing them, but you guys seem to really buzz off them. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's to you. It's time for another Q&A. gentlemen welcome to this it's another episode of question mark i'm sure once again that this is going to be quite long because they always are 104 questions asked in about 12 hours which is incredible i always expect it to be like 10 questions because for me in my mind's eye this isn't me being modest or anything this is just a straight truth here in my mind's eye it's the who the fuck would want to listen to me waffle on with no script? Why would anyone want that? And then you remember that I get at least one comment a day saying, look, your best vids, the best things you do are the stuff that's not scripted. Stop scripting your vids. And it's like, but you've got to understand that if I didn't script these fucking things, I would talk for days, right? And while that could be a good thing, if you look at the stats, yeah, most people watch the first about 20 minutes of my vids and then get bored because I've talked for too long. So those, they have to be like that. Anyway, what we'll do, we'll do it the usual style, which is either uh, my battery will die, my battery will die, or I'll notice I've talked for an hour. I was outside. But I will try and keep going, actually, because, you know, we never know if we could get these ones done, done quickly. Rapid fight. No, that's not going to happen. John Dean says, within UK wrestling, who is the least likable wrestler you have ever seen? This is a tricky one, because on the one hand, you could mean the character who, um, so you, you know, who, basically saying, who's the best heel? Who's the worst, you know, who's the best one to get in heel heat? Or you could be saying the person behind the character. That's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, regarding, I mean, behind the character, there's a guy called Roughneck, who just is awful in the ring, and is a very angry young man. And, you know, had a lot of goes at me and then tried to make up with me. And then when I didn't want to make up with him, because I didn't see the point in making up, we had another go at me, which was hilarious. Um, regarding, you know, the other way, the least likable. I mean, Dave Rain is an absolute cunt, isn't he? I mean, how, why why are, we, why are we support this guy? It's one of those times, sometimes I watch him in the ring and go, what is it about you that I buzz off? And you sat there for the whole match going, this guy's a cock. And then he'll do one thing in the ring where you just go, aww. I really like that. <laughs> you know? I mean, he's... he's... <laughs> so there's that. Dave, yeah, Dave Rain is an absolute arse. I like heels, you know me. So all my favourite wrestlers are heels. So when you, when you say least likable, for me, the least likable ones are either people like Evan Sarvin, who've got no talent and don't, don't deserve to be anywhere near the ring, or people who are just like... I don't know. I don't... You know, there's, there's characters out there who are just complete losers, who just go, why should I care about you in any way, shape or form? You know, but for me, it's all the heels. I hope that answers that. It's probably not a very good answer, I'm afraid, to start us off with. Ha! The Mick52 says, Hi, Mark. Keep up the great work. Loving your bids. My question is, if you choose a superstar, past or present, to have a documentary DVD that hasn't had one before, who would it be? That's a hard question, because all the ones you think of straight away, like, oh, I'd like to see an Edge one, there's one. I'd like to see a Batista one, there's one. I'd like to see a Big Show one, there's one. I'd like to see a Stone Cold one, there's several. I'd like to see a Rick Rude one. Always, you know? I'd like to see you. We've had the Jake Roberts one. We've had the Dusty Rhodes one. And we've had ones that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily think, like, why would they do that sort of thing, you know? I mean, the Jake Roberts one isn't a bad DVD. It's just one of those, at the time, it was just one of those, where did that come from? So I think, you know what I mean? Ravishing and Rick Root, I would love to see. Love to see. Ben Kelly says, nice to see you. Q&A again, Mark. Yay. Love your vids, and it's great to see how much more your videos have improved, even more in just a few months. Keep it up. <laughs> it's interesting that I'm filming this one and it's lower resolution, isn't it? Just so it's a smaller video file. I went and looked at my old Q&As and I realised that they're all filmed in HD, which is one of the reasons why they take so long to upload. And it's one of those, come on, no, we do the 10 years ago series in HD and we do the 98 series in HD. Everything else is in low def. It's got to be. Because I've got, I, I've got really good internet in that it downloads anything ridiculously fast, yeah? Upload, not so good. It takes a long time to get my vids online. The HD ones, god damn. An episode 10 years ago, you're looking at four hours to, to upload. And that, because of that, that's one of the things that I, why I prefer doing... Um, I'll always prefer doing my series is, is, is than doing current wrestling. Because with current wrestling, it's a, you've got to get your review up as fast as you can. The closer you can get your review on YouTube to the end of the show, yeah, the more views you get. That is a fact. I did my Extreme Rules review on Monday evening. It hasn't even had 600 views yet. 
you know it's just that's that's the way the current that's that, that's not that's my fault for not watching the show live not reviewing it as soon as it finished that's that's the price you pay you know um it's, so it's just interesting to say how much your vids have improved but in some respect well the reason I'm, yeah there is a point here trust me in some respects they've actually devolved a little bit haven't they because you know like i say not as good not as good quality here here's my question how long do you feel daniel brown will be this over and this popular um it's an interesting one because, oh you've got two questions as well also uh, your thoughts on cm punk leaving the WWE and the fans attempting to start up chance sorry the questions aren't great but anyways congrats on your growing success on youtube and cheers for being, my, for being entertained for so many years thank you very much i'm glad that my videos still entertain you after all these years <laughs> the cm punk one couldn't give a shit truly don't care if he's burnt out he's burnt out should have seen his contract out genuinely believe that there's chance fuck off Stop it. Just just stop it. Daniel Bryan's an interesting one because this is my point that I, saw, I said a moment ago that I like heels, right? And the thing about baby faces, I love the chase. I don't like the capture. And what I mean by that is I'll give you a great example of that. We've got in Future Shot, we've got a guy called Zach Gibson. I'm sure he's... Oh, he's there. Well, there he is. There's Zach. And Zach spent ages chasing down the championship, all right? He is the current champion. And I... Cannot wait for him to lose that belt. And that's no, not, not a knock on Zach. Zach is my second favourite wrestler of last year. He is phenomenal. He doesn't do bad matches. But I don't care about him as a champion because he's both faced. Just don't care. When you've got a heel champion, all you can, you know, you just want, like, this is going to be the, the night he loses the belt. This is going to be the night he loses the belt. Yeah, when you're a babyface champion, I just, I just don't care. That's just my nature. So with Daniel Bryan, it's like, yes, he won the championship. But after all this time, he finally won the championship. And now you just go, meh. Don't care. Wanting to lose it so they can start the next chase. Does that make sense? I really hope that makes sense. Really hope that makes sense. Also, I, I, got, I got into a conversation just last night on Facebook about how WWE how, how I think that the Yes champ is actually more over than he is. That's an interesting one. So, I mean, it could last you just a couple of months, couldn't it? And then they'll just pull the plug on. I can't see it. They, they, I don't know. The company seems to be very high on him. So, it's. I hope it lasts a long, long time. I hope he's this over for a long, long time. Like I say, I wouldn't mind him dropping the belt sometime soon. Because like I say, the chase. It's the chase for me. The chase is much, much more important to me than the capture. So, um, thoughts on Kurt Angle and Jeff Jarrett and TNA as workers on the feud over Kurt's kids in 2010. Says Khalif Jaima. Um, Kurt Angle and Jeff Jarrett and TNA. I mean, Kurt... Kurt's one of these freaks of nature who can still work, isn't he? Jeff Jarrett's a guy who I sometimes think I've been a little too bit too harsh on, but I, 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 he just doesn't interest me as a wrestler. You know, when you hear the OSW dog guys talk about how great he is, I'm like, mm, have I been a bit too nasty to that guy? It's like, no, he just doesn't do it for me. It's all Jeff Jarrett doesn't. Um, that feud over Kurt's kids in 2010, I barely remember. So I can't. That 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 should probably give you an, in, an indication of what I remember or what I feel about that feud. Feud over kids is not cool, is it? I mean, that's something that should be kept away from. I understand that in the real world there are mum, mum, you know, there are parents feuding over the rights or the so have, you know, access days for kids. I mean, Jesus Christ, my my parents went through a very bitter divorce, very very bitter, and they argued like fucking cats and dogs over me and my brothers for many many years. So there is that element of realism there is what I'm trying to say I'm not just airing my old laundry for you trust me um, but I, I, it's something I don't want to see because wrestling is all about escapism isn't it We you know, when we go to wrestling or when we sit down to watch wrestling we forget all our problems and you know we get you know, we, 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 we are entertained aren't we we don't want to see if you're going through a fucking divorce and you've got you're having issues about who looks after your kids. You don't really see it when you want to sit down to watch wrestling, do you? Fucking hell. Dan Tomlinson says, Edge was injured at No Out 2003 in a six-man tag with Brock Lesnar and Chris Benoit against Team Angle. No, no, he wasn't actually, was he, Dan? He was attacked backstage. He didn't actually make it to the match, if you remember right. My question is, where do you think Edge would have fit into WrestleMania 19? What do you think Edge would have done in 2003 had he not been injured? This is an interesting question, because I'm... Because Edge is one that I'm watching, you know, for the 2004 and the 10 years ago. And you see Edge come back from his injury and just go, but he's not changed. He hasn't done anything at all. I think Edge, Edge's injury probably happened at the best possible time that it could have done, if that makes sense. Because he was starting to get stale already. 
you know, it's, once he'd stopped teaming with Ray, it's one of those, right, do something impressive. And he just sat in the same plateau. Obviously, I would have wanted in 2003, because of what how SmackDown was doing at the time, you would hope that he would have been booked high up, maybe put one of, be one of the guys who put Cena over. I don't, I really don't know. Um, I can't think. It's an interesting one. I can't think, because WrestleMania 19 is a really, really good show. Edge isn't on it. Edge doesn't feature on it. It's one of those meh sort of things, you know. I mean, <laughs> my first thought, you know, you've got the three team. The, you know, the, the six-man tag, the three teams even. I didn't expect him to be in there as but like a fourth team. Other than that, I mean, other than that, where else would you put him? It's a tricky one, isn't it? That's a really good question. I don't really, really don't know. I'm afraid, Dan. Sorry about that one. Jack Bradley asks, Hi, Mark. My question is this. In your previous Q&A videos, you have talked about the state of British wrestling and put over many talents that we have over him, which I have. Wait, what I want to know is from you is this. Does British wrestling need a one in a million individual to take the British wrestling scene by storm and really drive it forward? If it does, who out there could it be? We've got an issue with British wrestling, with the wrestling scene over here, and it's that it used to be massive. I and mean, I can't stress how massive it used to be. British wrestling was huge in the 1980s. It was colossally large. And the thing about it was is that they had everyday names. Everyone knew Big Daddy, you know? So, because we don't have that TV deal, and of course, it's not just a TV deal. The thing is that over here, we've got TNA on Challenge TV, right? Challenge is a free view channel, which means that it, it's available in any home. It's not like it's on cable or anything like that, so those people who don't know. But it's still a relatively niche product. They Don't get me wrong, they get decent viewing figures. They get be TNA does better over here than WWE does because WWE is on Sky Sports, which is a pay-per-view. It's a, it's a um, subscription channel. You know, It's like a cable channel or whatever. Back in the day, though, back in the 80s, World of Sport, which used to show British wrestling, was on ITV, which is Channel 3, which is one of the standard channels. We have five channels over here for years. We had five channels. And then you know, Sky came along and well, you know, before Sky came, Sky's been around for a long time, but the majority of people just had the five channels. Before Freeview came along, most people just had the five channels. And ITV, which was channel three, is where British wrestling used to be. And lots of people watched it. A lot of people. Every year, for example, we have the FA Cup final. This is, this is all for people who aren't in England. Can I just point this out? I'm sorry. If you're sat there going, yes, I know this, Mark. What's your fucking point? Hold, hold, hold your horses. <laughs> Um, yeah, we have the FA Cup final, it, and back in the day, when live sport wasn't on every night of the week, the FA Cup final was a big deal, because it was a chance to see some live football, and World of Sport would have wrestling on, before, in like the hour, hour and a half before the FA Cup final, and they would put their big matches on, on those cards, they were huge, you know, these were massive, and what it meant is that these men became household names, so Robbie Brookside and Cat Weasel, and Dean McManus, and, you know, Mick McManus, sorry, Dean McManus is a current wrestler. You know, loads of wrestlers like that became household names, and they were Big Daddy being the uh, number one guy. In my opinion, there is a whole raft of talent out there in the British scene, and I would say that I'd say 99% of them are fucking brilliant. Sorry, not 9 let's say 90%. You know, 50% of them are real top of line workers, all right, who've got the body, Chris Travis is an example, have got the body, have got the look, have got the skills to make it in the WWE. But the thing is, if you went up to a random guy in the street and said, do you like, you know, wrestling? And you go, oh yeah, I've seen a bit of wrestling. Do you know who Chris Travis is? Not a clue. Not a clue. Not a clue. And that's the thing. So there is, there is talent out there, I could probably tell you 10 names out there, who, um, who I think deserve to make it into the big time, but the one in a million thingy, individual, I, I, I mean, there isn't anyone. In my opinion out there, in British wrestling at the moment, there isn't a draw. British, I think the, the company is the draw. So PCW may bring in the imports that we all got, that we, we like to go and see, but we just, we're just we going to see Preston City Wrestle. We're not going, it's like, oh my God, I'm going to see this guy. I go to Future Shop because I love Future Shop. It's not like, no, I'm going to see Dave Rain and everything else is just a bonus. You know, does that make sense? I I think without a mainstream TV deal, that I don't think the one in a million individual will happen, is what I'll say. Um, so there we go. TWK Review says, how important is the, promo produ is the production value of an indie wrestling show now that more and more promotions are getting TV deals and their IP, IP pay-per-view? That's a great question. I like that one, isn't it? Um, it's... Um, 
I think recently, it, just going off British wrestling, I don't know about American ones, but I'm off British wrestling, they've all the companies that I go and watch have really stepped up their production. Just having a little curtain where the wrestlers come out just isn't good enough anymore. Because when, you, as a wrestling fan, you watch WWE, and so you're you're used to seeing what the WWE product is. You're expect you're used to seeing these big entrance ways and the lights and the sound and the smoke and all that, and HD cameras and all that. One of the reasons why I got out of GPW was because I was embarrassed by our product. You know, we had these camcorders that still recorded on video. And, you know, so I would be like, you know, I would enjoy working at a show and then get back and watch the DVD and just be absolutely horrified. Because it's just like, what the fuck is this? You know, we're charging a tenner a go for this. And that's not a slight on the guys who make the DVD because they were working hard with what they have, with the resources that they have available. But the thing is, here's, here's the important thing, right? This is an important thing. It all depends on the promoter and what the promoter wants. All right, it goes like this. If... Production values mean something to you. You will take the profits that you make from your show and you will invest them back into the company. All right? So that you can afford to have HD cameras and you can afford to have the big ass entrance way. Future Shop has just got a new entrance way. It looks fantastic. It's got two video screens on it. It looks the bee's knees and there's lights all over it and the smoke and there's, it's brilliant. PCW have stepped it up even more. Their new entrance way is unbelievably brilliant. You know, it takes the future shop one and turns it up a notch. You know, like I say, lots of smoke and a big entrance when it says PCW across it. It looks amazing. And then you go to places like Great Bear, who I used to work for, and they come out of a curtain. And you just like, it just completely different. It makes it look so poor. And so, so, so I mean, obviously, oh, right, the important thing here is what, the important thing is what happens in the ring, all right? But it's all a perception thing. It's like why people say, oh, yeah, Future Shock should be given a TV. It's like, no, they really shouldn't. Because Future Shock filmed their shows in, a, in the Guild Hall, and it holds 150 people. Imagine trying to put that on TV, and imagine the, the yeah, you've got a perception of, imagine they put it on Challenge, right? Over here in the UK, we like I say, the TNA is on. And they put it after TNA. So an hour of Future Shock wrestling. Oh man, I've heard Mark Pearson talk about Future Shock. He always says they're amazing. I'm going to watch this. What's your first impression? It was like, well, they're in a guild hall and there's 150 people there. After Impact's been on, with all the lights and sound of the camera and action and 2,000 people at the Impact Zone, you're looking at Future Shock going, damn, that looks so small. <laughs> so it look, looks pretty poor compared. And it doesn't matter how much the in ring stuff matters. You know, the in ring can be the best thing ever. But if it looks second rate, you as a fan just go, well, it looks second rate. So with the advent of eye pay per views and all that sort of stuff, um, you know, it, it becomes much more important what your product looks like. All right, does that make sense? I think to answer your question, I think it's very important. If you're going to be, if if you sell DVDs of your product, yeah, your whole product needs to look brilliant. And that what I mean by that is you need your, to be recording it in the best quality that you can. All right. Everything immediately around you or in the building needs to look professional. So if you film in a bingo hall, don't make it look like a bingo hall because then people will go, oh, they're in a bingo hall. Yeah. You know, make your entrance way look good. Make sure your microphones sound fantastic. Make sure you've got the best people doing the jobs, like the ring announcing and the commentary and all of that. Make it sound so it's perfect. You know, and basically, as a promoter, you've got to invest in your product. I worked at GPW with a computer microphone. Now, think about that. A computer microphone that's designed just for talking on fucking World of Warcraft or something like that. You know, sounds great on your PC. Sounds fucking awful on a DVD. You know, sounds so poor. And you just look, you know, like I say... GPW DVDs that I've got and just you get them home I cannot wait to watch this match I remember this match being so good and you look at it going oh man that's horrible you know one of the reasons why I got out so very important per three bill says um if you have watched it what's your opinion on the ready to rumble movie <laughs> ready to rumble movie watched it when it came on vid or DVD didn't see it at the cinema first impression you know two wrestling fans who are real big marks like sticking their fingers up their asses to get free drinks. And you're like, right. You all know that I was a hardcore WWF guy. I did not watch WCW. I read about WCW guys and knew of them and knew what was happening in WCW because of Power Slam. But, so for me, the big thrill of the film was watching it and seeing these people I'd never seen before. This was my first taste of Goldberg or DDP or anyone like that. My first taste of them was seeing them on Ready to Roll. The film was garbage. The film makes wrestling fans look so poor. And the film 
could only have been made by WCW, you know? It's one of those, oh, just look at the state of your product. OSW have reviewed it. They do a great, great job. In fact, my, all my opinions are just mirrored by theirs completely. The Fredster. 101 says, Mark, I really want to start watching British wrestling, but I'm not sure where to start. So, Nye. Nye question is, what promotion would you recommend watching? You have to ask. Sorry, only a little second question. Are there any old shows you'd recommend to really showcase British wrestling? Right, first things for on keep up the good work and great bits. Right, first thing, you know I'm going to say Future Shop. Um, and for, as, as for an old show, um, their International Super Show. Future Shock International Super Show. Type that into a YouTube bar. The whole show is online. The whole thing. It happened on my 30th birthday. Go and watch it. If nothing else, because the main event is Davey Richards versus Jack Gallagher, and it's amazing. There's also a cage match between Dave Rain and Zach Gibson that's really good. There's also a tag match between the uh, BOD and the models, which is absolutely ridiculous. And yes, you can see me many, many times marking out like a drunken little boy, as I am. Um, right, these are the promotions that I watch on a, either on a regular or semi-regular basis, all right? Some of them I watch on DVD, some of them I will, I've watched it in person, and then some of them who I've just heard nothing but good things about and would recommend them. So, of course, for me, there's Future Shock, okay? Storyline-based wrestling, which is what I love the most, all right? And then there's GPW, who I used to work for, up in Wigan, who are a similar product. Storyline-based wrestling. I don't think they're as good as Future Shock, personally. But and they also use a very similar amount of talent as Future Shock do, but in different, playing different characters or different roles. PCW is the one you go to if you want to see your imports, all right? They have more imports than anyone else that I can, I can think of. The last show that I saw at, that I went to see had Rikishi, had Vader, had Steve Carino, had Prince DeVitt, had Chris Masters on. Happy days, you know. The, the more expensive, that most wrestling shows you go to are a tenner, they're 15 quid, but you feel like you, it's worth it for the uh, the imports, uh, is the way you'll probably see it. There's um, NGW, a base up in Hull, who I've heard nothing but good about. There's Insane Champions of Wrestling up in Glasgow, who had the documentary on the BBC recently. They are fantastic. Progress down in London. I've been to one of their shows. I wish so badly I could go to another one. Absolutely fantastic. There's BPW in North Wales, who I, again, heard nothing but good about. I wanted to go to one of their shows for the longest time. And then there's Infinite Promotions down in Liverpool, who... Uh, you know, I've never seen a bad show. There's also on the east coast, the South Side Wrestling, who um, they based in St. Neots and, and Nottingham, it's sort of in between. Uh, again, they, they, they bring a lot of imports in. Any of those companies, type them into YouTube and see what you can find. You'll find good stuff from all. PCW have got a lot of vids on. They put their entire Rumbles on, for example, and they like to put quite a decent amount of matches. Any of those companies, I think, upload full matches from time to time as well. Um, basically, what I would say about British wrestling is, is if you can find somewhere that's hosting it not too far away from you, go along to it, especially if you've never been to a live wrestling show other than a WWE country show, because you will enjoy yourself. I'm so, I've never, ever once had a comment on Facebook saying, hey, Mark, I'm going to insert show here um, this weekend because you, you're always talking about British wrestling. I know. Drac and I'll have a good time, and you know, I'll say, tell me who's on the card, and say, oh, this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and you know, if I know the people, I'll say, oh, you'll, you'll enjoy this guy, you'll enjoy that guy. A couple of days, like, I always say, like, will you let me know what you thought of the show? Not once have I had a message saying, Mark, that wrestling was shite. You know, every single person has loved it. And then you get really nice messages a month later, two months later, six months later, saying, Mark, I can't believe I didn't go to British wrestling. I had this show in my town, my city, for all this time, and I never went to it. And now I've been to it four times, and I absolutely love it. And it makes me, oh, it makes my little heart, oh, I love it. I love it. I would, it, it would make me the happiest boy in the world if people just sent me messages all day long saying, look, I went to British Wrestling because you said it was awesome. I would love that. I haven't done any reviews recently of it because it's one of those things that I just haven't written notes down. I've been having such a good time. I've been to four PCW shows this year. I haven't reviewed any of them because I just, you know, I haven't made any notes on the night. So it's like, right, okay, next PCW show I go to, I am fucking reviewing, all right? Okay, so there we go. Mega Spinnet 2 says, favourite wrestling documentary? Um, I love Beyond the Mat. I love um, Last of the McGuinness. It's brilliant. And there's a new one called Superman, a British wrestling one that's really, really good. Um, so, yeah, probably those three. How's that sound? Sexual Sense asked two questions. Who do you think, apart from Sami Zayn, has a chance of being a big player in the WWE for the future from NXT? 
A lot of people believe Shawn Michaels is the greatest performer and all-round wrestler in the world history. Do you agree with this? And who else would you put on his level? In my opinion, Shawn Michaels is the best wrestler there's ever been. In my opinion. Um, Ric Flair would probably run in a quite, quite a close second. But I always believe that the Heartbreak Kid was just that little bit better for me. And of course, he was a WF guy. You know? So Ric Flair, to me, was this guy who came in for a couple of years and then fucked off and was you know, read about in Power Slam sort of thing. Does that make sense? Um, other than Sami Zayn... Well, I mean, Tyler Breeze is my favourite NXT guy because he's fucking dope. Uh, obviously, I love Adrian Neville to bits. And one of the things about when, when they put the NXT title on him, it was like, yep, that means he'll be coming up eventually. You know, Langston came up and Rollins came up and Bo Dallas is on his way. So it's like, now he's got the championship, he's coming. So yeah, I'd say Adrian Neville. Because I, I mean, I've seen the guy wrestle twice now and you know, live in person. And he is just phenomenal. He's absolutely amazing. And he's just got better. Since he went to NXT, he's just got better. He just needs to improve his mic skills, in my opinion, and maybe get his ears pinned back, maybe. Um, next. Carl Sweetman says, Mark, when was the last time you marked out for a finishing move, new or old? Mine was recently the Implode of 450 splash that Adrian Neville did on NXT. Before that, it was Mark Miro's shooting star press. Boom. Mm, the, the Implode of 450 is really nice, isn't it? It's really nice. Um, Prince of It's Sunday Bloody Sunday is a fucking superb little brain buster. You know me, you know what my favourite finishing move. People are doing it often enough. It's called the Reverse Rana. It's the most ridiculous wrestling move you'll ever see. It's just straight up daft. <laughs> um... Um, last time you marked out for a finish move, I think I've marked out for finishing moves all the time, especially when I'm there live. I mean, Chris Travis versus Prince DeVitt at PCW recently, you know, it was two weeks ago, sorry. I marked out like a little girl the entire match, you know, that's what I do. I'm, I always say I'm a smart fan or a smart or whatever you want to call it when I'm reviewing stuff, all right? When I'm there live, I am such a mark. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. Actually, yeah, if you want to believe how much of a mark, if you haven't seen it, right, go onto my channel and there's a vid called Brit Rest 2012, right? Go and watch that because that has just got me marking out all over it. <laughs> Andrew T says, what was your reaction to seeing Sting on the network? I was shocked. I know you said Sting versus Taker was not, would not be not for you, but Rock wrestled both Hulk and Cena at Mania. The crowds helped the matches a lot. If Vince would do the match, it would break every pay-per-view record in history. That's best for business, in my opinion. Seeing Sting on the Ultimate Warrior documentary was a big surprise. Like, bloody hell, there's Sting, sort of thing. You know, didn't see that coming. Um... If they want to do Sting versus Taker, I won't complain per se. It's just that I think both men are so broken down that it's past the time that it'll be any good. You know, a couple of years ago, I'm sure it would have been absolutely phenomenal. But I just think after after seeing Sting against someone at Bound for Glory last year, who I forget, and then seeing Undertaker in this, in this month's, you know, sorry, in this match, this year's match with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, I just think no, just. No, it's past the time. I don't think, I don't think it'd be that much of a draw either. Now I think about it, because a lot of people, a lot of the younger fans, have no idea who Sting is. So it's one of those mm, that that be a tricky one. Um, Andrew D U, sorry, I got was already doing that. Husker D U two says, "Oh, poor you." But hey, we are good fans, watching all your videos as much as we can. Thank you very much for that. As for my question, do you think the fans actually bring? are actually being a detriment to the overall product. Only giving the few fans they mark out for the reaction, but others get the random chance even the delivering in the ring is even if they even if what they are delivering in the ring is better than your average match. Oh god, it drives me up the wall. It really is stupid. The way that fans these days, this last couple of years or so, are trying try to get themselves over by the looks of things. So they'll chant random things like 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 the CM Punk chant during a match that yeah, you know, it's like, come on, this guy is this the guy in the ring is doing his best. You know, he's putting on a decent match, and you, as a fan, who've paid your money, so you are allowed to chant what you want, don't get me wrong, but you're chanting CM Punk, Aaron. Really? How would you feel, you know? How would you feel if you're sat in working in an office, and, you know, and you're working away, and you're working hard, and you're trying to do good, and everyone else in the office is just chanting CM Punk at you? Because you'd be sat there going, is there any relevance to why? Is there a reason why you're chanting that at me? Because I just don't know. <laughs> you know, that's that, That's the thing. It's, it's, oh, it drives me up the wall. It really, really does. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, the fans can be detriment. It's one of those things, it's, 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 it's almost like a double standard, isn't it? Because the night after Mania, you sort of accept it and go, look, this is going to be fucking awesome. But when uh, the, the hijack Raw shit, where you know, the build up to it, I'm sat there giggling away, going, this is going to be wonderful. Because when, when this fails, it's going to be great. And of course, they did something about it. You know, it's a tricky one. It really is. It bothers me more when I see it at British shows. When, when fans start chanting yes at British shows, I glare at them <laughs> because it's one of those chant whatever you want, just don't chant the woody things at Chris Travis because he's got nothing to do with Daniel Bryan. You know, if Chris Travis is having a really good match and you start chanting yes at him, fuck off. I went to a Future Shock show with a guy. And T-Bone was in the opening contest. And this guy, his first Future Shock show, embarrassed the hell out of me by... He was chanting uh, Batista, Batista, Batista at T-Bone. And I took him out to the car park. At the end of the show, he's like, you know, did you enjoy the show and everything? And what I, I sat him down, and I wasn't a dick to him or anything like that, but I said to him, how would you feel if you spent all this time trying to get your character over? And then some idiot in the crowd... Um, Charted chanting for someone else, but chanting it at you. And he's like, I'd hate it. And I was like, So you've just done it to T Bone, how's that work? And he's like, Oh, yeah, love doing things like that. <laughs> sexual set, oh no, that's <laughs> sexual sense says he's a Siamese twin, so it's, that's why he's allowed two questions. I like that. JCDC says, In your opinion, um, what is the best? What's JCDC stand for? Let me know in the comments. I used to have a t shirt, I used to go to church, I used to be Christian, believe it or not. Yeah, I did. And I had a t-shirt that said JCDC on it. It said it was Jesus Christ Demon Crusher. Think about that for a second. <laughs> Can you imagine me as a Christian? Can you imagine it? Not doing this, for example. Yeah, I did. I went to church until I was nine until I was um seventeen. I went to church. And then I stopped. <laughs> because it was ridiculous. What in your opinion is the best WWE video package ever? The one that Ric Flair made um when Vince was gonna bring the end of the world. Uh, absolutely still to this day you watch it and go this is amazing this is amazing Fox Star Killer what do you think is the worst heel turn in history the one where John Cena got his foot and went like that did heel turn that was fucking terrible Dre's Baron says hi Mark in your No Way Out 2004 actually no, that's not fair is it Austin Turner in 2001 I still don't understand How's that one sound? In your No Way Out 2004 review, you said that Speed vs. Power, e.g. Eddie vs. Bork in this case, is one of your favourite match types because it's so easy to tell a good story with it. What are some of your favourites? So, um... Oh, fuck. My brain has gone completely blank. Alright? This is the problem without, without, with, with not flicking through your questions properly beforehand. Right, honestly, right, check this out. This is how this is going to go. What I want you to do is, Dries Behrens, I want you to ask me the same question again next time I do a Q&A, which might not be for a while. <laughs> but because the thing is, I'm going to click stop on that video, right? Go and sit down and go, oh, of course. <laughs> How's that sound? You know, I'll tell you one thing. I can tell you one. The last Future Shock show had T-Bone, who I talk about a lot because I... Fucking love the guy. Versus a guy called Sona Derson. Sona Derson is a high flyer. And this match, you know, it was it was one of those ah, oh, this is just great, isn't it? It's it's a great one to do. Scene play. The map oh no, I've missed one. Ashley Worth says, Do you think Barrett will ever surpass the mid card? This gimmick that he's got at the moment, the bad news Barrett one, on the one hand, I think actually it could do. I really do. But at the same time, I don't know. On the one hand, I think I love this gimmick. It's absolutely brilliant. On the, on the other hand, you think... Eh, but he's had good stuff for him before, like with the Nexus, and look where that went. I will say I hope so. For Barrett's sake, I hope so. We should have a brill there. Scene play. The Mount Rushmore of wrestling. Hulk Hogan, Steve Austin, The Rock, and John Cena. I would swap The Rock for Vince McMahon, personally. Anyway, enough of that. The real question I want to ask you, how does the map like a dumpster match work? I mean, when they fall off, did they really take the bump like there's people in there? Or they hide somewhere? Thoughts. A dumpster match? I don't know what you mean, because you see them going into the dumpster. So, 
I don't really know what, what, what you mean by hiding in there, because there's nowhere to hide. The only way they could hide is to have a panel in the bottom of the dumpster that they, when they launch into it, they get in, and then when you open the like, oh, where have they gone? Because there's a false floor. Excuse me, but other than that, I, I don't even really know what you mean by that one, Freda. Thomas Shevlin says, Mock, what were your thoughts on Ring of Honor as, as far as them being a starting point for some of the best in the business today, i.e. Samoa Joe? Daniels, Styles, Cesaro, etc. Do you think they could end up at a major network at some point? I have not watched Ring of Honor for four years now. Three and a half years. Final Battle 2010 was the last time I watched Ring of Honor. So I'll tell you this much. I, they could have... Their roster at the moment could be the stars of the future. And I wouldn't know a single name on them. That's funny, isn't it? Um, on a major network, I thought they are. I thought Sinclair bought them, didn't they? They're a network, aren't they? Is that, is that right? I don't, I don't know anything about them. Um... In the old days, with the four, the four that you mentioned there, fantastic, all good. And, you know, there was a time, 2007, I was obsessed with Ring of Honor. I was absolutely obsessed by it. But then it got it got too expensive. You know, it's a product where, to follow it properly, you have to buy the DVDs, and I just couldn't afford it. It just was just too much. I was spending a fortune on Ring of Honor DVDs, and I've still got quite a few of them, you know? I've still got my favourite ones, I never got rid of my favourite ones, like Driven, the, you know, the pay-per-view, things like that, with uh, McGuinness versus Danielson, amazing, but... Nowadays, for me, it's a tricky one. I watch WWE, right, because you asked me to, it's that simple. If this channel died today, and I said, you know... Fuck YouTube. And that's not even going to happen. I've already got a spare account. It's called Mark Pearson Wrestling. You know, it's already ready to go. Because I don't want to stop doing the 10 years ago show, um, show. If nothing else, that's what I will keep doing. But if if YouTube went away tomorrow, if for some reason YouTube shut down and they said, right, we're not doing this anymore, I would stop watching WWE in its entirety. And regarding indie wrestling, I like to think that because I support so much British wrestling, you know, I've been to eight shows this year, for example, so far. We're only in the fifth month of the year, you know. Um, I don't watch any others. I watch some PWG, if it's about, if it's on, I'll watch it and I'll love it and I'll mark out for it. Other than that, there's just nothing, just doesn't interest me. Across the Pond Wrestling, who you should really go and follow on Twitter, because they're great. It says, what are the best and worst fans, fans chants you've heard at a wrestling event? Now, I've got to be honest, the last PCW show I went to had some truly wonderful chants. I mean, truly wonderful. When Petey Williams came out, we all started chanting um, Canadian shit at him, which was fucking brilliant. The best chant I've ever heard was at a, t a WWE house show in Manchester. Big show waddling back to the ring. I don't know if he won or lost. <coughs> Fans started chanting, you fat bastard at him, which was hilarious at the time. It was so funny. The worst... It's anyone who chants yes, like I've just said before. If you chant yes at a wrestling show, I just don't get it. Because the person in the ring isn't Daniel Bryan. So you don't need to do it. How's that sound? Martin Steele says, hello there, Mark. I always wondered why Ultimo Dragon didn't do very well in WWE. He was brought in when the Cruiserweight division was still hot on SmackDown. And there was a lot of hype for his arrival. Sadly, things didn't work out. Do you think this might be because they already had Ray, a mass wrestler? Um, or is another reason? Love the videos and keep up the entertainment. I think... I mean, what... You know, going through his matches for part of the 10 years ago series, he didn't really do anything of note, did he? You ever think of Ultimo Dragon, and you think of... I watched one of his matches last night. Um, I'm watching uh, Slambury 1998, and it's Ultimo Dragon versus Eddie Guerrero. I was watching it with my brother-in-law, and his first thing is up... Yeah, you because know, I, I went to the toilet while they were making their entrances. And, I, you know, so I didn't know what match was coming up next. Does that make sense? So I came up from the top. Oh, it's Ultimo Dragon. My brother will cock as a flash when he didn't fall over on his entranceway. There you go. That's the thing that he's remembered for in the WWE. He fell over at WrestleMania 20. And I actually I turned to it, Alex. And I was just like, you haven't seen that show since the night it was on. How do you remember that? It's like, because it's just one of those things that was really funny. Like, ha, ha, ha. I think he just got lost in the shuffle. I think he got lost in the shuffle. And I think that you've got to remember that WWE don't give a shit about their cruiserweight division. In... The next pay-per-view I'm going to review as part of my 10 years ago series is Charbo Guerrero defend, no, challenging, challenging for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship, yeah? Which is held by Jacqueline. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, so that, I, I would put it down to that, if nothing else. Yeah, you, you are probably right about the mass wrestler thing. We don't need two mass wrestlers, do we? Uh, Sin Cara learned that one. But, um, 
Yeah, I think he's got lost in the shuffle, is the truth. Hi, Mark, says Brock Tree 4 Just been something I've been thinking. Is there some, really such a thing as smart wrestling fans anymore? I could see that back in the day when, there was, when, when what was going on backstage wasn't freely available. But now anyone, even a person who doesn't care about wrestling at all, can look up Wikipedia or a news site. It seems that smarts have gone from a small group of people who, make, who know what kayfabe is and what isn't to a small group of, of things that's chanting CM Punk makes them cool and that anyone who doesn't like the promotion style of wrestling wrestler they like is an idiot sheep. Your thoughts, please, and keep up the good work. I will try to keep up the good work. My missus said yesterday, is it bad that I marked out for dot, dot, dot? And then I went... I'm like, what's up? And he was marking out. I'm fucking doing it again. I'm saying wrestling terms. Around here, we all know them. There, that is one for you. Watch a wrestling match with a wrestler. How's that one sound? I've done that recently. Watch wrestling matches with, with wrestlers. And they've got terms... For things that I didn't know. The sequences in wrestling. That off the top of my head. I can't remember any. <laughs> right. Certain sequences have got names. And they'll say. Oh they're doing the insert name spot. And you go the what? Oh the, the insert the, 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 the spot. It's this into that into that into this. And you go. I didn't even know it had a name. Oh yeah everyone knows that. Oh. <laughs> sort of thing. You know. Um. My missus, like I say, uses wrestling terminology that she's picked up from me. You are completely right. Anyone can go and find out about kayfabe now. And, you know, the smart fan. It's rare in the day you find a fan that doesn't know insider terms and things like that, isn't it? I don't know about you. But when I do, when I find fans like that, I just look at them with such envy and think, I wish I was you. I don't know why. I've been, you know, I've been, I'm as guilty as anyone for calling people a mark back in the day. It's something I try not to do nowadays because being a mark is fucking awesome. You know, we, we as the IWC and the YWC should never ever mock people for being marks. Being a mark is awesome. Can you imagine, can you remember what it was like when you were a kid and you didn't know it was fake and you didn't know how they did blade jobs and you didn't, and you know, you, you thought it was real and all that. Can you remember how good that was? You know, do you remember that? I wish to every fucking one of the seven that I didn't spot blade jobs. If I could train myself to not look for them, you know, but if I see a guy get hit with a chair and he goes down and goes, I can't, my little brain just can't ignore it, <laughs> you know. Oh, dear me. The CM, chatting CM Punk thinking you're cool. Fuck off, just get out of here. And yeah, idiot sheep thing. It's, it's no, they're not idiot sheep. They're just fans of something that they buzz off. I don't get, right, I do not understand why anyone watches TNA. A lot of my friends watch TNA because, I, as far as I can tell, because it's wrestling. Um, because it's on free TV. And what I said to one of my friends recently is, I'm not enough of a wrestling fan to watch TNA. And they're like, what do you mean by that? And he goes, Cause, because in my life, I'm a full-time carer for my girlfriend. You know, I've got to do everything for her, you know. Um, I have a very finite time amount of time for wrestling, you know. Which is why it takes me so long to watch shows. I can watch maybe three, four matches at a time. And then... Bam, it's got, I've got to do something else. So the pay for you review on, like I did on Monday, is such a rare thing for me these days, where I get up, I turn to Lisa and, you know, and say, how are you feeling today, honey? And she, I feel like death. I'm going to take me super duper whooper painkillers and go to sleep for a couple of hours. I'm like, right, fucking let's do some wrestling and watch the whole show in one go. And this never happens. So like last night, I watched the first... Actually, no, I watched the majority. We watched the majority of Slambury in one go. We got as far as Goldberg versus Perry Sun in one go. Um, so yeah, but the point I'm trying to make is that I, I, I say to people, I just, I'm not, I, I don't have enough time as a wrestling fan to what, I'm not enough of a wrestling fan to be, to be, to be that obsessed with it that I have to watch it. Does that make sense? You know, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm sorry. I've, I've talked for that long about that, that I've lost my original point. That's the problem with the Q and A's. JHS Torre says, "What is your favourite ever Kurt Angle match? Personally, mine has to be versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 21. Although I know many would disagree. And there's five comments to this one. You, of course, have replied. Cole Miner's glove. Jerry has um, done Kurt Angle versus Shane McMahon Street Fight from 2001 King of the Ring, which is a good match. Uh, Kurt Angle versus Undertaker from No Way Out 2006 is also a great match. I'm probably going to go with you though. Um, to be honest, I reckon versus." Um, 
versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 21. Absolutely fantastic match. It's in 2005, so there's less than a year to go before I'll be reviewing that show as part of my 10 years ago series. Happy days are here we go. Delhi 1000 says, Hi Rosebud. Do you think Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart WF Championship match from WrestleMania 12 is overrated or not? It is. It just is. There's a lot of people out there. Shut up! With your digger. Inconsiderate workers. There's a building houses next door. Cunt. Um. Oh god, there's, I know so many people who love that match who think it's the greatest match ever. And you go back and watch it, and it is so boring. And it's so long. And the thing is, it's a good match. It's just the lack of falls really hurts, I think. If you watch that Iron Man match and then go and watch Rock vs. Triple H from Judgment Day 2000, they are night and day. Because the Iron Man match in 2000, in my opinion, is so good because there's falls off nothings. You know, I love the fact that Triple H hits a big move, gets a pin off it, and then it's like, well, the dude dead still. Let's cover him again. So he does, and he gets a three off it. And you're like, that is fantastic storytelling. That is absolutely fantastic. You wouldn't be hit with a pedigree and then make an instant recovery. If you, if the pedigree is enough to keep you down for a three count, it will be enough to keep you down for a six count. And then if you go for a third cover, then you kick out of it. That makes sense. The Brett versus Sean one is a good match apart from Brett's ridiculous... You know, he stopped selling an injury at one point for a while. And then, like I say, the lack of falls or submissions hurts the match. How well would the Shield and the White family fit into the attitude here? It says Monkey Scans off, Offly. Monkey Scans Offly. Um, I think both teams would fit in nicely. I think the Wyatts would fit in right at home, wouldn't they? The Shield. I think the individuals, maybe. Would they work? Boss Man at the time in the Attitude Era, remember? With wearing the same sort of thing? I you know, I like to think that both both sets would work fine. Hippie Killers says, Hi Mark, I was wondering if you could change your result to any WrestleMania main event, what would it be and why? Cheers, dude, keep up the great bids. WrestleMania 2000, Rock will win the championship. I know that having Triple H win sets up my one of my favourite main events from the next month of Backlash 2000, Rock vs Triple H, Rock finally wins the championship. Happy days, love that fucking main event. But, come on, it's WrestleMania, and the good guy wins. The, the bad guy does not leave WrestleMania as champion. I think that was a silly business move. Noobishly Pad is a great name. It says, hey, Mark, how did you get started as a wrestling commentator? Um, oh, that's nice and simple. I did the IWF, if anyone remembers that, then the Internet Wrestling Federation. I did it on No Mercy. I did it on my old channel. Most of the vids have gone now because I got copyright strikes on them, believe it or not. Despite the fact I was using royalty-free music, I got copyright strikes, and that doesn't make any sense. Um, I used to do the commentary, and I basically started putting it about as soon as I got into British wrestling. I was like, look, I love your product. I want to be involved in the business. I do commentary. What do you think of my commentary? I've got a lot of positive things. I said, look, your commentary's actually pretty good here, Mark. Um, I asked a guy called Johnny Brannigan, who works at GPW, who owns GPW. Like, you know, what I asked him, what would I need to do to be a commentator for you? It wasn't, a, look, can I come and work for you? It was, like, what would I need to do? Do I need to have a qualification? Do I need to do an audition? Do I need to send you a tape? What do I need to do? And he said, actually, we've got a position coming up for a commentator. I'll be in touch. And he was a few months later. And I started in September, no, October, sorry, 2012. You know, it was that, it was that simple. It was that easy. It was one of those, that was easy sort of thing. It wasn't really a challenge. And that was that. And off I went for a couple of, for a year, sorry. I did it for a year and then I got out as quick as I could. One of the questions further up is why don't you work for them anymore? So I'll answer that later on. The, 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 the Nage one says, what would you do to make the IC title and the US titles more important? I, in my opinion, they should be unified and then that champion should be featured in at least one main event match segment in the build-up to every pay-per-view. Um, basically, yeah, you, you've got to hit the money right, you hit the bang on the money there. Those two belts should be unified and soon, in my opinion, because when you've got Ambrose holding the championship for the best part of a year, excuse me, never defending it, why should I care when he does defend it? Because it's one of those, nah, I don't. And it's there, oh, he's the US champion. Big deal. You, the IC title means jack shit. I try, I said on my Extreme Rules video that I try so hard to get behind whoever's the champion. And then, I mean, Jesus Christ, 
it just the title it means nothing. They mean, in my opinion, they both go. Is what I'd say. Yeah, you know, you're saying unify them. I'd get rid of them because they just don't do anything for them. Especially the Intercontinental Championship. It's a, it's a, it's a curse for whoever has it. It just drags them down. The belt does, and that's never ever a good thing. Yeah, you know, the, the, that championship, the Intercontinental Championship, used to mean that when you dropped the Intercontinental Championship belt, there was a very good chance that you were going to be elevated into the main event. See Macho Man, see Ultimate Warrior for two prime examples. That see Brett and see Sean. Actually, now you think about it, yeah. Once that, once you've got, when you're the champion within the IC champion, you're the IC champion. That's all good. When you eventually drop that belt, there's a chance you're going to be elevated to the main event. Do you reckon Biggie Longston, now that he's dropped the title, now that he's dropped the championship to Bad News Barrett, do you reckon he's going to be champion, challenging John Cena next month? No. Oh, John Cena's not even champion, is he? Do you reckon he's going to be <laughs> so used to it? Do you reckon he's going to be challenging Daniel Bryan next month? Because the answer's obviously not. So it's one of those, yeah, just get rid of them both. Sam P. No relation. Says, hi, Mark. My question is, what do you think uh, Brock Lesnar's second run with WWE has been like, it, as I feel it's a lot like his first run, where so many wrestlers are going out of their way to put him over, especially having the honour of ending Undertaker's WrestleMania streak, which he did not deserve. Keep it up work. Can't wait for the next episode of 10 years ago. You're going to like the next one. It's got Mordecai on it. Can't wait for that one. Um, Bork's run is an interesting one, because he's never here. He's like, you know, he, he wrestles, he comes in, he wrestles, doesn't say anything. When he does say something, he sounds like a girl. And then he fucks off for a couple of months, and you just like, you kind of forget about him. Like, oh, yeah, he's still on the roster, but he hasn't done anything for a while. Um, I think losing to Cena was bad. You know, having him lose to Cena in his first match was a fucking stupid. I understand the reasoning behind it, of course. They really thought he'd just run him back to, to UFC. But I, oh, no, I, it's, for me... Borg should have come back and just been our ultimate ass kicking machine. You know, because he's coming from the UFC, so he's got the legitimacy. So having him have so many matches with Triple H and him, you know, I, I just. Any time that he's lost, I just think, no, that should not have happened, in my opinion. Call Miners Glove says, Hi, Mark. I am O, booking the. Uh, in my, or in my opinion, booking the order of the matches is very important. The opening match should be used to set the tone for the pay-per-view. What is the best opening match to a pay-per-view or I pay per view you've seen? Thanks, of course. Keep the good words coming. P.S. Still waiting for 1989 series. I've told you a thousand times, Jerry. When I get the network, I will do a 1989 WCW review. I promise. It's just when when the network comes over to the UK. It's all good and well that you find folks in America who've already got the network who can watch whatever you want. But I haven't got it. There are ways for me to get it. I choose not to because I want to be able to watch them on my Xbox. It's that simple. Um, best opening match. Is Brett versus Owen from WrestleMania 10. Absolutely fantastic match. Oh my god, we've been gassing on for 50 minutes. John Balderson says, Hi Mark, with drug abuse still lingering in wrestling, how much does Vince and other owners know about the use of drugs? Honestly, that is a hard question because I couldn't tell you because I'm not Vince. It's one of those things, they have the drug testing and it's one of those, if you believe them, you know, that the results are all legit. But of course, Benoit passed his test for testosterone um, uh, met, you know, exam, didn't it? Drug test and then was found to have ridiculous amounts of testosterone in his system. I don't know what Vince's deal is. I mean, Vince sort of, uh, yeah, regarding drugs, I mean, I... You like to think that recreational drug use has sort of gone out of wrestling, but I don't think it ever will. It's the truth. They'll be because there's a bit of... Back in the day when they started testing for steroids, what did they do? Well, they went and got human growth hormone because it was undetectable. You know, I'm sure if they really want to get their fix of something, they will do it. Does that make sense? At the end of the day, drugs, I think there will always be drugs in the wrestling business like the WWE because these guys are on the road four days a week and having a match a night, four nights a week. And yeah, your, body, your human body isn't meant to do that. So, of course, they get injuries and they get hurt and they get beaten up and they need something to take the pain away. Now, me and you, it may just be a case of, right, well, I'll have a merry down of an eve. But the thing is, what happens the next night when you've got that much pain? You have your merry down and it still doesn't work. So, you have two merry downs. You've got, oh, that worked. What happens in a month's time is that you're drinking eight merry downs just to get to sleep. You know, that's the way it works. That's way how addiction starts. Because you find that, you know, I'm going to go to bed tonight. I'm going to have a joint. It'll make me go to sleep, you know. And then tomorrow night, that joint just doesn't make me go to sleep. And in a week's time, that joint, I barely even feel. You know, I'm still in that much pain. That's how it works. It just escalates. I can't imagine what it must be like. I really can't. I mean, just just being you. People say, oh, I want to be a wrestler. 
every time I look at them, I'm going, you're an idiot. You're an absolute idiot. Because it's not just the wrestling and the entertaining people. I hate driving. I love driving. Don't get me wrong. I love driving, but I hate motorway driving. All right? So imagine what it must be like to... Yeah, in some respect, drive the equivalent of, say, London to Manchester for my British friend. You know, you f- when you finished your match, you finish your match and then drive the equivalent of London to Manchester. That by you know, have to get there before you get your hotel. You get no sleep at all, and then you do it again the next day. That sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds absolutely awful. And then to do that in constant pain. But with potentially a serious injury, because of course, if you complain about your serious injury, there might be a chance you lose your spot. You know, fuck, say that sounds horrendous. Drug use and rock wrestling. How much does Vince know about it? I have no idea. Bloodboy235 says, Would you do a non wrestling QA? They'd be a lot better. I replied to that with, I'm happy to answer non wrestling questions. Uh, I just prefer wrestling ones because that's what I know a lot about. So, he says, Game of Thrones or Doctor Who? And your favourite Game of Thrones character, your favourite incarnation of the Doctor. The Doctor one's easy, it's David Tennant, it's the 11th Doctor. So the 10th Doctor, dead easy. Favourite Game of Thrones character is Tyrion Lannister, but Tywin Lannister is right behind. I'm Lannister blood through and through. I am proper Lannister, you know. Uh, Game of Thrones or Doctor Who? Hmm. I've been into Game. I've been into Doctor Who for a lot longer than I've been in Game of Thrones. But at the same time, I've got into Game of Thrones in such a heavy way. I've got all the books. I've read all the books that there are. I've got all the shows on DVD. I watch them. You know, over here in England, Game of Thrones is on a Monday night at 9 o'clock on Sky Atlantic. I watch it on a live stream at 2 in the morning on a Sunday night. You know, which is why I didn't watch Extreme Rules, for example. And, you know, I had to choose between fucking WrestleMania and fucking Game of Thrones. And, of course, I chose Wrestle Bloody Mania. <laughs> you know, it's one of those. Um, yeah, I'm going to say Doctor Who still. I still prefer Doctor Who. I've recently got off some friends of mine into Doctor Who, and I sat there watching Series 3 with them the other night, just going, look, I told you. These guys have been resisting for ages, and they've said, right, we've watched every DVD we own. Is there something you could give us? It's got a lot of episodes. Like, I've got Doctor Who. I've been trying to give you Doctor Who for years, and he's like, fine, I'll fucking take Doctor Who. And he took Series 1 and 2 of Doctor Who off me. And then I got a text message three days later. Can we have some more Doctor Who? Like, yes, you fucking can. Yes, you can. Mark, One Piece fan twenty is back. Says, how highly do you rate Kurt Angle? And I have to say to this one, now then, or of all time. He said, how highly did you rate him in his WWE days? Um, the thing about Kurt is that he could do anything. He could have a good match with near enough anyone, and he could do the serious badass really, really well. But he also was very, very good. Actually, I just had a thought, I'm wearing a Doctor Who t-shirt as we talk. It's not a favourite of mine, but, you know, I'm wearing a Doctor Who t-shirt. Why would I even consider Game of Thrones? Bloody hell. Kurt, yeah, could do the comedic stuff as well, which made him a great all-rounder. It's funny going back watching now from his promo. Sorry, my hips are really hurting today. So I've been stood up for the best part of an hour now, so it's hurting, you know. Um... Uh, if you go back and watch his promos from the year 2000, watch them now, they are so bad. But I think 2001, 2002, Kurt Angle was absolutely fantastic. Brad, what is your favourite? What is the worst pay-per-view you've ever seen? Ah, worst is easy. Because yeah, my, my best changes all the time. My worst is easy. It's Heroes of Wrestling. There is nothing that's ever come close apart from maybe Starcade 99, that's even come close to how poor that pay-per-view was. Best, well, I mean, WrestleMania 17, WrestleMania 19, are both really good. But my top three never changes, and that is WrestleMania 17, Backlash 2000, and In Your House Canadian Stampede from 1997. Stephen Hay said, Hey Mark, love your vids. All the way back when you used to do shooting from the horse's mouth in your old bathroom, or what was your old kitchen? No, it was the old bathroom. It was, and it was knocked down, and it was all good. I marked out a bit when Cesaro said he was a Paul Heyman guy. Also love it when Punk... Also loved when he was with Punk. Oh, I'll tell you, wrestler, past or present, who else would you love to see, see him manage? Who, would, who else would be a Paul Heyman guy, right? Can I say someone from the past, even though they did work together? 
I was that sound. If you remember back in the early days of the 1990s, there was a faction in WCW called the Dangerous Alliance, which was held, you know, led by Paul E. Dangerously. One of the guys in there was Steve Austin. And I thought they worked so well together that I would have loved to have seen... You know when, you know when Austin turned heel in 2001? Paul Heyman as his, as, as his mouthpiece would have... I mean, Austin doesn't need a manager, obviously. But I would have loved to have seen that again. I would have loved, loved, loved to have seen that. Aaron Pullman said, sorry, sorry, Polly, Polly in says, could you do a series where you review classic Japanese pro wrestling matches? Because I thought it would expand the knowledge for the viewers, introduce them to a new world of pro wrestling that they have never seen before. Keep up the good work and love the bids. Here's the thing. I could do that. I would struggle with it because I wouldn't have a clue why a lot of the matches are happening. Um, I, what I'll say is if there was demand for it, I would do it. It's that simple. If people would watch it, watch me talking about it. Thing is, a lot of the Japanese wrestling, it'd be, it'd be, I think it'd be a very, very, very niche product. I think niche series because you'd be watching these vids going, look, I, I'd be sad going, look, this is the greatest baby wrestling show I've ever seen, and you know, five people in my subscription list would have seen that show. You know, so it's a tricky one. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't mind doing it. You know, it's one that I think could be fun, it could be enjoyable, it could be entertaining, it could be um, educational, shall we say, for you guys and for me. But at the same time, it's like I say, if there's demand, do it, yeah, do it. Kieran Lucas says, Hi Mark, love the vids, keep it with hard work. What is your opinion on the Chris Benoit death tragedy? On the Chris Benoit death tragedy, I'd say this, the guy was a fucking coward. Because if you have that, you know, the inner demons... You know, to the, you know the, the voices in my head or the anger issues or whatever it was that made him snap and kill his son and then kill his wife, you know, and then kill yourself so we don't know why, you know? If nothing, write it down. Write, leave us a suicide note. Say something. I did this because. But then, I mean, what I, what I don't get, is, if, if I remember rightly, you know, he... He killed his, his son and then killed his missus or the other way around. And at no point between the two did he stop and go, oh my God, what have I done? He just went and did it. And then but a lot of time passed between him killing them and killing himself, didn't it? Oh, it just coward. Utterly coward. I don't like, yeah. I don't want to open a can of worms, but I don't, yeah, I think it's a cowardly way to do it. I think he should have recorded a vid, could have done anything, could have called someone to say so. Just tell us why, you know? I don't think there's a conspiracy of it, though. I think Benoit did it. I don't think... I, th I saw a thing on, online recently, a, 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 a protest, a, bl a blog that was a protest, and like, Chris Benoit can't have done this. And you know, and it said, you know, my hero, Chris Benoit, would never have killed these people. It's like, well, yeah, you're just using your own, your own rationale. You know, your rationale doesn't work. It just does not work, you know? It's a tricky one. So, should we do one more question? Because I've been recording for an hour now. Let's do one more. So the awesome one says, where would you rank AJ Lee amongst the top WWE slash WF divas of all time? I don't think... I don't think she's been in the business or in the WWE long enough for us to look at her as the best of all the time. I think... I loved her character work a couple of years ago, especially with Daniel Bryan. I think it was absolutely amazing. I think nowadays she doesn't really do anything, does she? I mean, I know she's on a leave of absence at the moment. Recently, before she dropped the championship, she was just the women's champion who defended the championship, who retained the championship. Big deal. There was nothing... Since she cut that pipe bomb promo, there's been nothing really to her, actually. There was that incident with some guy this punk backstage and see my mental arm. But, you know, I, best of all the time, I mean, I don't think she's in my top five. Let's put it that way. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have waffled on for an hour. We have many, 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 many more questions to go. I hope you've enjoyed this first part. I don't know when part two will be up, but it'll be, it won't be long. Let's put it that way. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this episode of Question Mark. I've been Mark P. This one's for you. Ah, it's good stuff. Take it easy and good night.